It is my opinion that the NCAA pretty much is to college athletes as the Unabomber was to the Postal Service. I workshopped that on Jesse earlier today, and he said, that's a little edgy. And I said, it's true, Jesse. Spot the flaw. It's Spot the error. It's true. So Mason Smith is suspended at LSU. Mason Smith's a former five-star guy. He hurt himself in their first game last year, as you may recall, against Florida State. So it just came out earlier this week that Mason Smith will miss the Florida State game this year because he's suspended by the NCAA. Let me walk you through this timeline. You thought Devontae Walker was bad, which it was. Let me walk you through this timeline. This organization is out for the best interest of uh, college athletes, as they would call them student athletes. Just bear that in mind. Mason Smith and several other folks commit the ultimate crime of signing their name on things and profiting off of it. Five minutes later, it was all legalized in 2021. You might know it as NIL now, but Mason Smith and some folks made some money off autographs before that. Again, the crime here is writing your own name on something and benefiting from it. So the NCAA pops them, and the NCAA tells the folks who have been caught up in it, you can choose the game you're suspended for in the 2022 season. I know it sounds made up, but it's not. Sonny Ship has a whole thread about this over on Go 24-7 right now if you want to read up on it. So almost all of the guys who are caught up in it choose, you know, whatever FCS team they're going to play. They serve their suspension. The coaches largely mislead the media about why they're not playing, a little banged up, precautionary. In reality, they're suspended. No one knows it. So that's all well and good. Well, Mason Smith got hurt in the first game last year, and he sure wasn't going to sit out the FSU game. So the NCAA comes along and says, hey, bud, you, you don't get to count those injured games. You've still got to sit out a game as punishment. And oh, by the way, we're not going to afford you the opportunity to go by the same law that everyone else went by. You've got to sit out the first game. Who do you guys play in week one? Oh, Florida State. They're supposed to be good, right? Not our problem. Deal with it. And then they checked out. The NCAA strikes me as people who don't work on Fridays, so they probably left the office for the last time today, and they'll be back on Monday. Um, so, last week, a couple weeks ago, I guess at this point, I was telling you about Devontae Walker. Devontae Walker had uh, been enrolled at a bunch of different places, but due to injury or COVID, had never played a football game. So he ends up at Kent State, breaks out. Wants to transfer and does transfer to North Carolina. And then the NCAA says, uh, nope, your transfer waiver is not granted. You are not eligible. And that's currently on appeal with no end in sight. Uh, probably I would expect it about one or two hours before kickoff of South Carolina, North Carolina, because that's how these people operate. It's pathetic. So anyway, just again, to keep you up to speed on what's happening, the NCAA has no problem retrofitting new rules onto old examples like Devontae Walker, who transfers before the NCAA tightens up the transfer rules, but then they look at him and say, hey, even though you left before we kind of changed the rules and you should be eligible regardless, we're going to apply the new standard to you anyway. They have no problem doing that. However, NIL gets legalized about 10 minutes after Mason Smith signs his name on something for cash. Mm -mm, sorry, we, we do not turn that retroactive lens the other way. Mason, you're out. And you're out when we say you're out, even though the rest of the folks that got popped are out whenever they chose to be out. Never mind the fact that none of you should be out. How does this stand legally? I saw a lot of you ask that today, and sometimes I don't want to go the way that everyone else is going, but I am a cattle running alongside all of you right now. We are a herd, and we are together asking, how does this stand legally? And I've always thought that about a lot of these NCAA decisions. And it turns out I was right, because when do you ever hear of a solid legal defense being mounted against the NCAA and it not succeeding in overwhelming fashion? I would imagine, you know, I have it on good authority. There are some strong legal minds down there in the Pelican State. I've seen John Grisham movies, so I know the kind of folks who live down there. Someone someone's got to have some free time between now and the time they kick it off against FSU down in Orlando. Here's how bad it is. It's so bad with Devontae Walker. Shane Beamer is South Carolina's coach. They play North Carolina in week one. Shane Beamer's like, 
mm, that that's I don't I don't like that. That's a shame. I saw a bunch of Florida State fans today saying, "Come on, man, are you serious right now?" And they benefit from them being out. That's when you know you've crossed a line in the sand over which there is no coming back. Imagine telling kids 20 years from now, sit down, kiddo. Um, you see that autograph on your wall that the running back from USC made $500 for? Well, what if I told you once upon a time, not once upon a Saturday, once upon a time, there was this dark, dark entity in Indianapolis, Indiana, cast a bad light over an otherwise great city up there. And they claimed to be out for the kids, and all they did was ruin it for the kids. It truly seems like the standard by which NCAA enforcement folks operate under is, which decision can we make here that screws a college athlete the most thoroughly? Whichever decision that is, that's the one we're going to make. Uh, it's happening all over the place. It's still today. It's happening. And it just happened to Mason Smith. And I have seen a grand total of one people slash persons I know defend this. And I really don't think they were defending it. College football nerds probably just, they just wanted to play devil's advocate. Because there were strong teacher's pet vibes to what they posted on Twitter a little while ago. I don't know which one of you it was, but I have, I have a pretty good feeling I'll find out on my iJosh after the show's over tonight. 